Me too. What you doing? Smile. Smile. Smile, Chandler. Smile. Good yeah. smile. Good smiles, yes. What? <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> give, 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 can Grandma have a drink of water? Yeah. Oh, are you drinking water? Give, give Grandma a drink. Oh, mm, that is good water. Erin wants to give you a drink. Oh, she wants oh, to come. Here, I'll give you a drink. No. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Erin. Say hi. Show, show Sarah. See, hi, Erin. How are you? Are you playing in the water? Yeah, sweetie. Oh, look what Erin did. That's neat. She put this water in the cup. Yeah, I gotta get some more. There, now you're gonna get some more. Now we can get drinks. Yeah. 
That's the most fun part is pouring it back out. Yeah, coughing afterward too. There we go. Yes. Thank you. Look at little Lydia. <laughs> said she was going to get tired. Oh, uh, yeah, Carol didn't really say. She just didn't really know what her schedule was. Well, I, I asked her to leave here now. As long as, uh, Chloe! Hi, Chloe! Chloe! Chloe, look at Chloe! <laughs> Want me to get you another one, Aaron? Like okay, I will get you another one. Want me to wash it? The boys left me. Who left you? The boys left me. The boys left you? The boys left me. Oh, love you. Yes. They love you. Who loves you? Loves me. Who loves you? Loves me. Oh yes. It's Chloe. Chloe loves you. Aaron loves you. You love Aaron. Do you love Aaron? Yeah. You ready to get out? Baby. Hi, Lydia. Hi. How are you, Dolly? How are you doing? Are we just going on <laughs> When I was a little bitty boy just up off the bed We used to go around to Grandma's house and run up the so Chicken pie, country and homemade butter on the bread. But the best darn thing about Grandma's house was great big feather bed. He had six feet wide, soft as a downy chick. His favorite beds for them, he took a whole full top for the pig. Did a whole day kids for a large and a piggy wig stole from the shed. Didn't get much sleep, but we had a lot of fun. Oh, good. That's a great idea.
Okay. We're gonna get started. So we've got uh, enough. I got the tent set up over here, and you know what? Since you're a tender foot, you have to sleep outside the first time. Hey, I did that last time. No, no. This, don't worry. This is the rule. Okay. You'll be safe. There's no bears or nothing out here. Look at this. It's a nice wilderness. Nothing wrong. Okay. No, you're fine. You're fine. Just sleep right out there. Okay. <laughs> Is that supposed to be? You say it's called Taco Bell? 
Taco, Taco Bell. <laughs> Taco Bell. Um, and seeing as how I feel expertise in the Mexican culture, they hired me for that. Why? A sober HAL are really interested in interactive mouse pads. Now, do you think that they would be interested in maybe um, having your company like get in some crossover links with the, um, some Mexilink appropriation, something like that? I, I don't know. Why that? That's a... Well, you know, F systems. We've decided there's there's no future, and uh, we're working towards four turbo prop disc operating systems. <laughs> Anybody, uh, anybody want a bag bomb shake? <laughs> okay. okay, wait, everybody's got to stay out here. Okay, who is Becky? Uh, Grandma! <laughs> who is I? Grandma! Oh, really cool. Ben. Who is Ben? Jim. Yeah. Who was uh, Lisa? Oh. <laughs> Kim? Gross. Who'd you say? Who was Kim? Z. <laughs> Danny? Gordon. 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 Yeah. Elaine? Sarah. Sarah. Cameron? You know these kids today, they just, they are just so, so, they just have it so easy. Easy, yeah, they've got it easy. Easy. They, uh, I mean, it wasn't like this in my day, you know. You tell them how it is, they don't believe you. Nope, they won't believe you. Believe. Uh, we had it much tougher. We had it tough. Tough. In my day, Ah, we lived in a plywood house, four board, five boards of plywood, four for the walls, and one for the roof. Roof? Ha! You had it easy. We, we lived in a cardboard shoebox in the middle of the road. <laughs> road? You lived near a road? My day, we lived in a rolled up newspaper in the side of a ditch five miles from any road. <laughs> and we had to walk at least that far to get to some place where we could work. Work? Yeah. Now you five miles. So you were lucky, let me tell you. We used to have to walk 20 miles to work. Where we'd work in a coal mine. That's right. Five miles with sticks for tools. Digging out lumps of coal, getting paid a nickel a day. Oh, you had it easy. You had tools. We had to lick the road clean for 20 miles just so we could live there. For nothing. <laughs> you mean you got to work for free? We had to, we had to get up every morning and, and walk 100 miles just so we could Pay a man a nickel a day to break bottles over our heads. <laughs> yeah, well, you ought to hear how my, my daddy used to treat me. That's right. He used to whip us with his belt and feed us stale, moldy bread for breakfast. Stale, moldy bread? You were lucky. We only got rocks for dinner. And we got beat with blunt objects over the head. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, we got up every morning and my stepdaddy fed us a little lump of poison. Poison? <laughs> <laughs> Man, every night before we went to bed, he'd kill us. <laughs> Yep, yep. You tell that to kids today, they won't believe you. Nope. Was a little mouse. What's this little mouse? A tent. A tent. 
tail. Get it out. And there was also a lion. <laughs> okay. With a mane. One day, the little mousy smelled. And what? And what did he smell? Cheese. Cheese. So what did he do? Nibble nibbled on the cheese. And when he started nibbling on the cheese, what did he hear? Snap. Snap. What was it? A trap. A trap. The trap had caught his tail. He tried to pull it out, but he couldn't get loose. <laughs> and so along came a lion. What are you doing here? You're caught in a trap. I'm caught in a trap. Oh, well. Would you like me to help you out? Yeah. So the lion took a stick and got him out of the trap. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, little mouse. What do you do? I'm I'll help you. Someday I will help you, yeah. said the little mouse. Oh, you make me laugh. Yeah. A little mouse like you to help a big lion like me? Oh, that is funny. And so they both went away. And then one day, the lion was walking along. And the lion heard something. What did the lion hear? Bullets whizzing past her head. And she didn't know where to go, so she ran and ran and ran into a rope. And the rope tied her to a tree. Along came the mousey. Oh, oh, the, the hunters. The hunters came and told the lion, Mr. Lion, we're going to tie you up to a tree, and you can't get away until we come back. And we're going to take your skin off. Oh, no! Oh. And so they left. And while they were gone, along came the mousey. What did he say? I am caught in a rope. Some hunters are going to come and take my skin away. This is the end. I am so sad. I can eat the rope. You can eat the rope? Yeah. Would you eat the rope and get me free? And he ate the rope, and the rope went. Snap. Oh, I am free. I am free. Oh, thank you, little mouse. You know, sometimes, even though you're little, you can help somebody big. Oh, even though you're big, you can help someone. Come on. <laughs> And even if you're big, huh? Help. Yeah, and we all help each other, huh? Say it again, Jim, until she hears. Jim, you know you watch it all Well, since we're all but one of us over the age of Barney, the household's been taken over by Barney. So, um, we are going to let everybody enjoy Barney the way we do. Don't we love watching Barney? And we're <laughs> not. So we're going to let you all enjoy being on Barney with us. Okay? So we would like this. This is a participation skit, and we would like you all to participate. Okay? Those of you who can. If you have babies and bunnies in our stand. We need to stand up. Stand up. And you need to do what we do. Okay, what we do, and then you sing, and same time we do it, and this, each one will take a turn leading, and then you sing what they sing, you sing what we sing. Okay. Okay, are you ready? Sarah, wait, wait, sir. Where's your battery? Where's your battery? Old Bill Jones, Old Bill Jones, and brought me back, and brought me back. And brought me back a rocking chair. A rocking chair. Lion came back. Lion came back from old Algiers. From old Algiers. From old Algiers. And brought me back. And brought me back a pair of shears. A pair of shears. Lion came back. Lion came back from the city zoo. And brought me back, and brought me back some nuts like you! Yeah.
Market research has shown that if Barney would start eating those little kids, their viewership would go way up. Quit your preaching at me and go get me some whiskey. Matthew, move up. Move up, Matt. What was it? We missed oh, the no! Girls, girls, come back and say it again. Come up here, we couldn't hear you way back there. Come way up by the light. Yeah, right here. Come over here, Jennifer. Do it from the top. Squawk! 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 Go get me some whiskey. Oh, quit preaching at me, squawk! Go get me some whiskey. Come on here, girls. Come here. Right up here, right up here, right up here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Loud. Stupid. Trade it. And that's whiskey for my husband. Good trade. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like us. <laughs> oh boy, I'm pretty tired. I think I'll kind of get ready to get the sack here. Oh boy, oh boy. You about ready to come to bed there? Yeah. There we go. I'm picking my contacts. Uh, <laughs> I'm to take some time to 
You want to Oh man, you know, I hate my life. I am committed to so many things that I just, I can never meet all my commitments. I can't believe it. I'm just too committed. I hate it. I'm going to jump off this cliff. One, two. No, wait, 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 wait. I'm a census guy, and I've been reporting about teenage deaths, and all. nobody's dying anymore, so I think I'll jump off with you because my family's not very good. I, I don't have one, and I'm not making money. And, and, uh, my back hurts, and oh. I just, okay. my church is going up, you know, okay. and your wax build up, and all that stuff. Your wax build up. Okay. One, two, no, wait, wait. Okay, I am a mortician, and nobody is dying anymore. Everybody on the earth is staying alive, and I mean, good health I can't handle it. I can't yeah. handle it. Okay, I'm, I'm going to do this. Okay, okay. Okay. Right. okay. Ready? One, two, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I have all of you. I film suicides, and I've had the most wonderful things. Oh my gosh, so many things happened. Like one time, this guy like jumped off, and he like he like kind of lived, but not really. No, he was like one more. He hit the branch, and it was just almost coming out his ears and nose. Yeah, that's the one. But and it was perfect for story, and it was so wonderful. And I had no more. Nobody's doing it anymore, and nobody has the will to do it. They just die right away. Yeah. 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 They're not jumping off anymore. And I already took care of them. Yeah. So let's just all them together, okay? Okay, okay, okay. 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 There's nothing to live for. Yeah. No, no, nothing. Okay. One, two, three! Oh, oh man! Oh, hey, I wasn't committed to that. All right. <laughs> Oh, stay there, stay there. We We're met. still getting videotaped. This, this, this is Carol's mother, father, and we met uh, Edith. You got her name? Edith. Uh, Janelle. Edith. Yeah. And, and, and Mel. Where's Mel? And, Who's uh, Mel? This and Mel. Uh, and Harry or? Yeah, Ray. Ray. We met those people. Those people are still living, and we met them. They were there. They were there. Can I tell you a story about the Nelson sign? Sure. We did. Remember, a lot of you, Jamin's stay there. family, uh, and I can't remember who else, uh, was it uh, Carly? Did you help her? What? We went down, we, Dad did all the, uh, all the uh, 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 book about the Helfenstein family. Uh, back in Germany, they were, where they came from, they were part of the royal family, and so they had their uh, ancestors recorded back to no, uh, About eight or nine hundred. Twelve hundred. Eight or nine hundred. Eight or nine hundred. Yeah. Okay. Well, the one name we had only back in twelve hundred. Anyway, it was twelve or fifteen hundred. We all got together and we went to the temple and the Jordan River Temple and we did baptisms for about a hundred and fifty or a hundred and forty of the Hilfenstein family. Uh, a couple a couple months later, I was there at the temple in the baptistry and I noticed a lady who had on a name tag. She was working at the temple, and her name was Helfenstein. And I said, oh, Helfenstein, we have some Helfensteins in our family. And she, and she was real busy, and so she did. She said, oh, oh, okay. And she, uh, but later, uh, and the next night, I got a call, and they said, hello, it's Brother Scott. And I said, yes. And said, is this is the Brother Scott that was in the temple last night in the baptistry. And I said, yes. And said, this is Sister Helfenstein. You mentioned that you were from the help. You, you had some Helfensteins, and we don't ever hear of very many Helfensteins. So we wanted to uh, see if we could get together and see if we're related, because uh, because we haven't ever heard the name. Of, you know, uh, we haven't found anybody else. So we made arrangements for them to come over. So they did come over, and his name was Ned Helfenstein, and uh, his wife, of course, married into the family. They had uh, also found the book that Dad had found that had the family file names. Their daughter had gone on a mission to Germany, and they, when they went back to pick her up, they went to the Helfenstein Castle. And uh, it was closed for the season. And they called the mayor of the town up and said, we'd like to see the Helfenstein Castle. And they said, well, I'm sorry, it's closed. And they said, oh, that's a shame, because we're, we are Helfensteins, and we're, our name is Helfenstein, and we're from America, and this is the only time we're gonna be here. You are Helfenstein? And they said, yes. He said, wait right there. We'll be right over. 
And so they came over and they took him up to the castle, they opened it up, they let him go all the way through, and see all of the, uh, see everything, and just treat him like the royal family that they were. Anyway, Brother Ned Helfenstein was, uh, he, well, he had also tried to submit the names, but when he submitted it, um, you could only do your direct line. And he couldn't quite prove, uh, couldn't quite find out the linkage between the Peter Helfenstein that was in Ohio, that was also our common ancestor. And he had three sons or something. Anyway, he couldn't find, he didn't know exactly which one it was. But we did. Uh, by the time we got it submitted, um, they didn't care that much anymore whether it was direct ancestry or not. And I was worried about that. I felt like we had cheated them because they had, you know, tried to do the work. But then I, I didn't understand. I found out that Dad had had the book uh, how many years ago? In 1950, Dad found the book and was ready to do the ready to do the work at that time. So we probably were first. We probably did have the first. We probably were ready to do the work first. And we didn't cheat for their help. Besides, they got the pass. Yeah, they got the pass. Right. So thanks a lot. And, uh, we're spotlighting one little person tonight, and her name is Lydia, because Mary Lydia Helfenstein was... Uh, little Lydia was named right here. So Lydia, would you come up, please? Lydia was named after Mary Lydia Helfenstein. There she is. I'm so proud of that. And I'm going to read you what they wrote in the paper when Mary Helfenstein died. <laughs> Yeah, this is the local newspaper yeah, where, local she, newspaper. where she lived. It's not anything our family wrote. This was just in the paper. <laughs> Mrs. Mary Tolman, they, of course they've used her married name, who fell at her home all by, about two weeks ago and broke her left hip, passed away Monday at a hospital in Omaha where she was taken for further medical care. Mrs. Tolman was past 90 years old and for almost half a century had been a resident of this territory. Despite her advanced years, she was able to get about and did most of her own housekeeping in her own home. She was possessed of a most kindly and neighborly manner and endeared herself not only to her own family, thank you, but many others with whom she came in contact. We pause today to pay a last tribute of affectionate respect to all that remains mortal of this, our loved friend and in this uh, moment of our heavy sorrow, we rejoice together in the things we are not and cannot be deprived, the love of our hearts and the memories of our minds. We rejoice that while she took with her as she must her wisdom and her knowledge, she did her best to convey to others what she had herself discovered, spending her life enriching the life of others. We rejoice in her tireless industry and the achievements of her labor, the high place she holds in the hearts and minds of the people of this community. She is endowed with these personal qualities which endeared her to her friends, her belief in what was true and pure and good, her strength, her gentleness and grace, her willingness to serve her regardless of self or faith in God. Early in her life she realized the importance and need of religious faith and instruction and thus made her confession and became a member of the First Adventist Church. Throughout her long life she was faithful to the Christian ideals and virtues and was most active as a leader in Sunday school and church work until her advanced age no longer made it possible for her to attend. I have to tell you a little bit about her. This is what the minister, the local minister, wrote about her. But you know what my daddy told me about her? That's his mom, right? Yeah, okay. that's his mom. He says, never anybody ever gave her any money for her birthday or something. He'd say, okay, uh, mom, what did you do with the money? She says, I gave it to the missionaries, of course. And she always, if she had a chance, would tell you about Jesus. She wrote to me when I was five years old and said, Jesus is coming back again, and I want you to be ready for it. When the missionaries came, I owed to her that I was ready for it. Just the letters that she sent me, and she quit. She died uh, the year I graduated from high school, and I never got to see her since I was yeah. past three years old. But then I went up and saw my cousin. It was uh, this lady's daughter, Aunt Edith here. Her daughter works up in Lake Tahoe and, uh, in the summers. So we went up to see her one year, and she said, you know, Grandma was a very religious person. She would always try to convert you. And one day, I invited her to my high school graduation, and she said, how come none of the other kids ever invited me to their high school graduation? She said, oh, Grandma, you know how you always try to make them be good. And uh, she says, do they really don't like that? And, and she said, well, Grandma, no. 
so she said, well, then I guess I better keep my mouth shut. And she said she didn't ever do that anymore. <laughs> So I don't know how much of all this is true, but I know my daddy always used to say to me, Cal, don't be a fanatic. <laughs> She was only four foot eleven. She was a short little person. I think it's interesting that little Lydia is so tiny because that's the way her namesake was. She was only four foot eleven. And they would ask her, well, how tall are you, Grandma? She says, I'm tall enough for ordinary purposes. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, uh, when their big boys would try to uh, get around her, she would take buckets of water and dump them in their heads. And they used to have some water fights. Like wrestle on the kitchen and she wrestled with them as long as they were Smaller than her. Even though she was little, she's still licking. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Grandma. Well, I hope you all feel like you know your uh, ancestors a little better from that. Yay! You all know that we're all going to get the really really get to meet them and see them all again, so at least you'll be able to ask, uh, ask them about some of the things you heard about tonight, and they'll tell you more. <laughs> um, tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, we decided, we'll have our, our little family uh, Sunday program, and we'll do some more uh, ancestor talk, right? Late. What time did you say? No, well, that's you right. know, we that's tried to get off at 9 o'clock this morning and yeah. we got off at 10, so I think 10 would be good. Uh, what time are we going to gather for breakfast? 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock? 10 o'clock? 9 o'clock. What, to start cooking? Gather to cook? Or no, what? eat. Eat? Nine. Or better, 9. 9 for eat at 9 and okay. start cooking at 8.30 or something. Does that sound okay Whose camp eat? are we doing the cooking in? Where should we bring our food to in the morning? Steve, are you in charge of that? Uh, yeah, bring it, bring it to our area there because there's the closest table. I mean, we can put a massive table over here. Okay, we'll... we'll... She liked running around in the field and eating grass. Rachel, horsey. And the little horsey. The little horsey? Yeah. Yes. And the little horsey would give rides on his back. And go, yeah, yeah. I'll give you a ride. So the kids would get up on Rachel's sets, Rachel horsey's back. And go ride and ride and ride and all through the field. Buggy on the ceiling. Yeah. Oh, get off, Buggy. Go away, Buggy.
like a kid guy. Well, they have to hear it before. Let's have us do it, and then um, they can learn it for us. Okay, we need some holders. Maybe Valerie, could you come up and hold it, Jennifer? Here she comes. Here she comes, guys. There with Michelle. Uh huh. Yeah. Go with Michelle too. Okay, is Rachel get a turn too? Yeah, okay. Yes. Rachel. Rachel's turn. Yeah. Go up with Michelle. Okay. <coughs> Is that everybody? That's it. Just those? Yeah. Okay. Oh, they had the twins. No. That died. No? Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah, now talk, talk about your thing. Okay. Uh, my name is Uriah Benson Mather. Shh. Let's everybody be quiet now so we can hear what Aaron says. Uriah Benjamin Mather is my name. Um, this is Hello. Hello. I am Nora Maud. Satchel Mather, and this is my daughter, Monita Mathers Lewis, when she got married. I'm Richard Sather, Satchel Mather. I'm Leona S. Zelda Mather. Um, 
I was born in 1811, and she was born the year before me in 1810. We were married in 1901, and our first child, Leona, was born in 1902, the year after. Um, she was born in 1911. And when, she, when Leona was nine, and when Leona was 16, we had our youngest one, Monita, in 1918. Um, oh, this is the, the pin I'm wearing on my lapel was given to me by my father before he died. It's a Civil War cross that he was awarded um, during the Civil War because he fought in that war. We need to pass this around. I don't know what else we should do. Grandma? When did you die? Oh, I died of um, black thyroid or something, chemical attack. And I think I died. How old was you? Your baby was only two when you died, right? Yeah. Baby you were was 40. Only two you were about 40. I so I, would, I was 42 when I died. No, you were 40, the baby was, was two. It's so just like Rachel 19. and me. So she died in 1920. And he died of a heart attack. Uh -huh. And she died of cancer. Right. And and I died that's of our Grandma Tolman right I'm, there. That's Grandma Tolman. I'm Grandma's mother. JL's wife. <laughs> and um, I. Uh, Why don't you tell about what you did a little yeah, bit in your life? After, um, after my wife died, I went to live with the owner's family, right? With her and her husband. And me and Oren Tolman went into business together, and we were contractors. And one um, one year, you know, there wasn't much contract, there wasn't much house building going on during the winter. So we went up and um, up to most Montana, Wyoming. Wyoming. We went to Wyoming, and while I was there, I caught pneumonia and died rather quickly. We didn't have time to do much at all. Why don't you tell about what you used, how you used it? Oh, um. I was very, uh, very polite, very, uh, handsome. <laughs> um, I was, I was a ladies' man, but not, you know, a ladies' man. <laughs> I was, um... Okay, all day. I was, okay. Yeah, um, I sung in operas. I had a great opera. <laughs> okay, you did it. Good job. Okay, you guys are great. Oh, Is wait, now, there's uh, something else. Um, wasn't it uh, Michelle's person that was, her daddy was a circuit preacher? Is that her? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. My daddy was a circuit preacher. <laughs> and you, you preached two sermons that you wrote in a book I have. Grandma has a church. copy of the sermons. She wrote them down. She wrote them down before and learned them and, and um, got up and gave me in his church when she was 18, when you were 18. And I was 18. I it. And I was 18. I it. Okay. That's here before you were married, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. And Leona had lived on the farm. She went, when the mother died, she, uh, her daddy says, uh, you've had enough work. Of course, she had the, the two little ones. She took Richard and Manita with her. Yeah, she took them with her. And Grandpa Tolman raised yeah, them and he raised with her. And, but she had had so much, she said, why don't you go visit your cousins in uh, Nebraska? So she went out to visit her cousins, and there she met Oren. And they were married in, the, in the two years and uh, took Nora and Manita, or took Manita and Dick with her to, to raise. And she used to play the piano. She learned the songs that her daddy sang in the operas, and she was, would, would play the piano. She learned to play on her own and sang those songs that he, she'd always say, my daddy sang this in Denver. And she played the piano those songs. She sang, played Belia and uh, old songs, I can't remember, uh, The Bohemian Girl, the opera uh, Belia and The Bohemian Girl. I remember both of those <laughs> operas that she told me about. We could, have, we, could have, we could have, if you're all real I good, we could have Grandma oh. Carol sing a song. Oh, I know. Uh, there's one thing I want to tell about my mother. It was very interesting. My mother, uh, her mother, of course, was, was an invalid, was, had uh, what, what I think was a thyroid deficiency. And uh, they called her an invalid. When she had her baby, she couldn't really take care of him. And Nubie had to take him up in his room up the stairs and, and of them in the night because she was too weak to get up at night. So, I'm so intent on not.
try that I can <laughs> remember what I was going to say. Anyway, my mother, uh, I got went back to see her just last year when we went to Georgia and to uh, Florida. I met my mother's first cousin, and she said that he was her idol as a, as a young, or her, you know, ideal as a young girl. She just loved Uncle Ben, and, and when he was around, uh, she was always just so happy. One day, when uh, they left, because she was had some trained nurse, was a trained nurse, she went and took care of Norbog one summer, and that was in Denver, and Leona and her went walked up on this hill one night, and she said, we sang to the top of our lungs just as loud as we could uh, with someone like you. She said, uh, Leona was my favorite cousin, and Yubi was my favorite uncle, because he was always so polite and handsome and kind and interested in him. And I asked my daddy once, I said, will you call him a ladies' man? Does that mean he was flirtatious? Yes. No, it just means the women always flocked around him because he was so handsome and kind, they just followed him around. But he was very wife was sick most of all of her life. And so because she was sick, they had, uh, uh, well, uh, my Leona called her Mammy. You know, they had a black lady that uh, lived in with them and, and really gave her a lot of mothering and sang songs like Skeeter Zimma Hummin and My Chocolate Covered Baby and Black Coal Black Rose, your, your Mammy's Little Coal Black Rose. My mother, those were the songs she used to sing to me when I, yeah. she, she sat, sat, I actually <laughs> dropped me to sleep every night. Skeeter's ever home. Yeah. And those were the kind of songs the she did singing. It, it took me quite a while to figure that out as an adult. <laughs> How my mother knew all these songs. And let me tell you, this is the secret. But when Cindy was a little baby, I remember Cindy Tallman, uh, my mm -hmm. oldest brother's girl. She lived close to my grandma, her grandma, my mother. And she used to come up every afternoon and mom would rock her to sleep. Well, you can imagine what song she sang to her, right? When she grew up, she married a black man. Twice. Twice. <laughs> her family was very upset. Because when she got the divorce from that man, they were so happy. She turned right around within the month and married a blacker man. <laughs> I figured she got the chocolate baby first and the coal black rose second. <laughs> I've never talked with her about that, and that's, you know, just kind of a family secret. I mean, just my own secret, so I'm sharing it with you. But uh, the way my mother sang those songs, it would make you love the black people. And she did. She loved her mammy. And, and I, it took me so long to figure all this out because, of course, her own mother was too sick to rock her and sing. Yeah. Okay, thank you very, very much. You've done wonderfully well. Before you go, there's one thing I want to do with this little boy. He, he proved himself last night beyond all uh, powers of proof. I'm so thrilled with him. But there's one other person here that has done the same thing in a different way. So I'm going to present her with these as a gift because she has made this camp possible. I'm sure David won't mind giving these up. <laughs> Becky made these for me by just going to the thrift store and making them up and they're just like the little boy had on. How did you got underneath me? Shorts. <laughs> 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 you don't mind giving up the one you got shorts on. I'm going to present these as a souvenir to Jennifer because she has made this can't much happier with the way she took care. So many of the children.